Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this big fellow right here, Tales of Glory. This is a game designed by Romain Chaston, and uh, artwork is by Miguel Coimbra. He did a magnificent job. And uh, it is basically a spatial engine building tableau game which you're tr within which you're trying to gain the most prestige points by uh, building buildings and defeating monsters and, and that type of stuff and going and finding artifacts and all this other kind of stuff. It's, it's really kind of an interesting theme and mechanically speaking, it's not that bad. But anyway, let me get down to the table, show you how it works, and then we'll come back with some final thoughts in just a few moments. Let's hit it. Now the point of Tales of Glory is to get the most prestige points. And prestige points are these little tokens over here and you get them in a number of different ways by matching up the right kind of buildings to other buildings that you've put into your tableau. Some uh, monsters or will give you prestige points for defeating them like this and like this. So there's a number of different ways. Sometimes you'll also get prestige points for having the most of a certain kind of resource at the end of the game. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to get uh, prestige points, but generally speaking, this is kind of a spatial tableau building engine building type game and so uh, let's explain how it works now in order to build your engine and expand your tableau you're going to have to get these tiles that are out here and the way you do that is by everybody is going to choose a tile that they want by choosing secretly one of their uh, cards and then putting it face down everybody does that simultaneously and once everybody has chosen a card face down you're going to flip them all over the number chosen it corresponds to the slot in which the uh, tile that you want is in. So the first player, and then going clockwise, gets to take their, their tiles. So uh, number three is going to be this one. And then number four is going to be this one right here. And then uh, this guy over here also picked four. And since four was already chosen by someone, he gets to choose one of the ones that's still out there. He's going to go ahead and choose this one. Um, now, a couple of things here. Now what has to happen is the tile that you bought is going to be put into your tableau. But in order to do that, you may have to pay some kind of fee that is up here. So if there is a banner, for example, this one right here, you have to pay one coin in order to put it into your banner, uh, into your tableau. On this banner here, you have to have two combat in order to be able to put this one into your tableau. So it just depends upon what you need to do. Now, at this point, everybody has to pay for their tiles and put them in their tableau. If you don't have enough, you can use uh, spells to equal either combat or magic uh, to be able to pay for some of these. So even though none of us have two combat, we could have paid some potions in order to raise our combat to what is necessary. So for example, over here, this uh, tile that she took costs two magic and one combat in order to defeat this monster. Well, she doesn't have any combat or magic, but she can use uh, three. Uh, one of them is to equal one combat, and the other two will be to equal to two magic. And now she'll be able to put this into her tableau. Now, once she puts this into her tableau, she has to match uh, diamonds on one side or the other. For example, this one right here cannot be placed here because there is no diamond uh, half on this side of the board. So it has to be placed here, here, or over here to finish that, that diamond. Now, when you do that, sometimes there will be a feature that is finished. For example, in this particular case, a key is finished by finishing that diamond right there in the middle, and that will award that hero a key, which they can use to unlock one of these treasures and get the rewards for those treasures. So in this particular case, we are going to put it right down here like this. Uh, she has already paid her uh, ne necessary requirements here. That gives her a key, and she must immediately use that key uh, on one of her different uh, uh, options here. Since she's a little bit low on uh, potions, we're going to go ahead and put it there and that will give her two potions and two gold as well. 
This person over here has a free tile, so they don't have to pay anything over here. And so they're going to put this over here and thus finish a key symbol as well. So that gets them a key and uh, we're okay with this. So we're gonna go ahead and take some prestige points uh, right off the bat. And that awards three prestige points uh, like so. And then the reward of the card itself that you have played. For example, over here, she was able to get four prestige points. So one, two, three, and four. This person uh, got three potions. Now this person over here has to pay one coin for their thing, but since they got it from up here in the wildlands, they also have to pay either an additional coin or an additional potion, whichever they want to do in order to pay for this. So we're gonna go ahead and use one coin and one potion in order to pay for this one. And uh, we're gonna put it, uh, let's see, we're just gonna put it right here. And because they finished this uh, diamond here, there is no other prerequisite, so he also gets a coin back. Now this person also took one from the Wildlands, so they're gonna have to also choose to uh, use an extra coin or um, a potion to put that here as well. After everybody has paid for, placed, and received the rewards for the tiles that they placed, uh, we follow here and we have to discard the two lowest tiles that are out here, so it would be these two like that and put it in the discard pile. This would rotate down to the one spot and then five more would be placed out in a random fashion. And as you can tell, you start with the one, once this, the one pile, once this pile runs out, you go to the twos and so forth and so on. Cards are taken back up into uh, their respective hands and we go back to another round of obtaining tiles. Now, at the end of the obtaining tiles phase, something that I missed, you have to determine who has the next first player. And that's determined by whoever took the lowest card. Well, in this particular case, this person took the lowest card, but they already had the first player token and it must change hands. So it goes to the person who took the next lowest tile and that was this person over here. So now they will go first in this new round and uh, the first player token changes hands every single round. And so once everybody has chosen their cards for the second round, everything is revealed and we have four different numbers, so no problems at all. Number, uh, the first player here gets to take their fourth uh, uh, per, uh, card. Uh, over here gets to take the five, and over here gets to take the six. Then, uh, first player is determined, so this will go to the next player, which would normally be over here, but as you can see, the reward for this is going to be um, to gain the first player token. So, so this person would get it, but because the reward comes after this is chosen, it's actually gonna come back over here, uh, pre presuming that they will be able to pay for uh, the price here. So they all we all purchased from the Wildlands, so we're all gonna have to account for this plus one coin or plus one uh, potion. So uh, we're going to pay one potion to reduce the cost necessary for the combat, and then we're going to pay one coin uh, as the extra that is necessary to purchase this tile. And we're gonna go ahead and put it into our uh, tableau here, uh, which will be right there. And then uh, this person needs to pay two, uh, but we'll pay an extra potion uh, because we got from the Wildlands. So we do get uh, one back. And then this one is going to be placed into their tableau as well, and that's gonna go right here. And then this person over here also has to pay one gold or one potion. Uh, it is free otherwise, so they only had to pay the one. And now this one is going to go right here like that, which will give a coin back. And now everybody collects their rewards. The two lowest tiles are discarded. This slides down and five more tiles come out. And then another round begins and this is how the game generally plays until all of these tiles have been run out which will equal 10 rounds. At the end of the 10th round everybody's prestige points is calculated. Uh, these are given out whoever has the most combat gets an additional four prestige. Whoever has the most 
potions gets four prestige and so forth and so on. Uh, whoever has the most magic ability, whoever has the most money uh, will get four prestige points. Uh, prestige points that you've accumulated are added to any other uh, end of the game type uh, things. Now end of the game are going to be things like this right here. It has an hourglass and then it says, for example, you get two prestige points for every treasure that's in your tableau. Uh, you get two prestige points for every place or green icon uh, like this one right here that is in your tableau. So you have those kinds of scoring as as well. Uh, so this one, you, you, you get two prestige points for every unlocked uh, treasure chest that you unlocked during the course of the game. So you add all of those things up and whoever has the most prestige at the end of all of that tabulation is the winner. So that's about that for Tales of Glory. I have to say that I was very impressed with this game um, from top to bottom, and you'll kind of get that as we go through my pros and cons, but this is the kind of game that I wish uh, more publishers were putting out because it has a good thematic tie. Uh, the mechanisms that are employed are very simple to understand, not difficult at all to teach, uh, and it's just, it plays very quickly, it plays very fast, intuitively, and, uh, and it's also very fun. So my first pro of the game is the artwork and graphic design of the game. Wow! Miguel Coimbra did an amazing job. You may have recognized his work in games like Small World. Uh, you can definitely see the difference, the artistic uh, uh, similarities and all that that's going on here between this and Small World. But man, did he do a good job as far as illustrating this game inside and out. Did a tremendous job. And so that is one of the things that I usually am really looking forward to. Not everybody's going to like the chibi uh, aspect of the artistry that was involved, but... It is great work and it makes the game really pop on the board. So I really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, the artwork was by far, hands down, the first thing that made this pop for me. My second pro of the game is very similar to uh, one of my huge pros in most games and that is variable player powers. You don't really have variable player powers here, but you do have variable starting spots or starting points. Uh, you have different resources that you start with, different abilities. One, one person will have more combat ability to start the game off with. Another person will have more magic ability to start the game off. Maybe they have more magic potions or maybe they have more gold. Uh, you have a different starting point which makes you different than everybody else and I love it when games do that. And this one does it in a very simple, non-complicated manner, which is even better. My third pro of the game is that there is virtually no downtime here. Uh, everybody has the ability uh, to do everything simultaneously. So that is really cool. Now, you don't have to do everything simultaneously. You can, of course, just kind of uh, double check and have kind of a checks and balances system to where everybody watches you pay for everything to make sure you do it right and, and make sure you get all the right rewards and all that other kind of stuff, but you don't have to. You can do everything simultaneously and that really makes the game just kind of clip along at a really fast pace, but not too fast to where it feels like you're being swept away by it. Uh, it's just a, a very... Uh, moderate brisk pace that it goes at and I love it because there is like I said no virtually no downtime now there there may be a little bit analysis paralysis that could creep in there uh, because of the nature of choosing the tiles where everybody chooses simultaneously if you get um, if you're a tile that you wanted gets chosen by somebody else now you're gonna have to put a little bit of a little bit more thought into which of the remaining tiles do you want to keep? So there is that uh, possibility that's there. Uh, so, but really, that's that, that's more of a, a player problem than it is a a game problem, at, in, especially in this one. Not always, um, but in this one, the analysis paralysis is more of a player problem than it is a game problem. Another pro for the game, and, and I don't usually mention this unless they are worthy of mentioning, and that is the insert for this. And, and I talked about this uh, when we did the unboxing of it a while ago, but the insert for this game is absolutely amazing. Uh, now, part of, the, part of the thing that they use here might wear down over time, but I do want to kind of show it to you. Let me get it over here so it's out from underneath that banner. Uh, so first of all, you see here that this pops in and pops out. And that's where it's a little bit of a, a problem because it is going to make you wear on the edge of the board a little bit, but it hasn't really been a problem yet. And um, 
but I, I mean, I can see that there is a little bit of damage happening there. So that's a little bit of a downside, but look at what it does. It acts as a lid to keep all of these things in their proper places. And if you look there, uh, you can see, well, I can't really tip it up too much, but everything has its own little compartment. And with this on top of there, it stays in its own compartment as well. So that's really cool. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that a lot. This one, these two things pop out and there's some more things that are, that are here as well. So I just really loved the thought processes that went into making this, uh, um, uh, insert a success and that's the level of detail that I really enjoy about games uh, or when or when producers and publishers put that level of thought into how are we going to uh, take care of these components and make them easier to manage during the course of the game uh, so I had to mention it here as a definite pro uh, beyond the shadow of a doubt Another pro for me is that they did uh, kind of go into a little bit of a uh, expandability aspect where they inv they uh, gave these extra tiles. These are quest tiles. And at the beginning of the game, after you have a few games underneath your belt of this and you're familiar with it, uh, you can uh, deal three of these out to everybody. And they, get to, they have to discard one, choose two, discard one. And then those become kind of secret things that only they can build. And so I really like that inclusion because it's going to, first of all, provide some longevity for the game. It's also going to provide another level of complexity that maybe your more seasoned gamers are going to be looking for. But even without these, this is a great little game. And I think that there's a lot of replayability in it based upon how the tiles are going to come out. You don't use all the tiles every single game. So there's some variability there. Now, with all that being said, I, I, I can really only kind of come up with one con, and that is, I, I've actually already kind of mentioned it, and that is the, the possibility that there, the, in the game, that there is... Now, with all that being said, you can probably tell this is going to get high marks, but there is one uh, con that I need to mention, and I've already kind of mentioned it, and that is that possibility that it has with some analysis paralysis there. Uh, if your tile gets chosen, um, unless you've already done the work and said, okay, this is my first choice, but maybe that's my second choice and that's my third choice and, and so forth. If you've not done that, now you're going to have to think about all of the different things that uh, are on the different tiles that are still left. Uh, so, because how they fit into your tableau really does matter. So you need to make sure that you're looking at all of the different connections, all of those different diamond points. Uh, does the side that I want to use it on, does it have a diamond point that matches up to this other place in my tableau? Uh, so those are the kinds of things that you have to think about. And granted, while you're choosing your tiles, you can do that. So it doesn't have to lead to analysis paralysis, but the, it, it's there. It's there. And, and, it's, and I realize that more often than not, analysis paralysis is a player problem, not a game problem. I get that. But um, the, the plain fact of the matter that, that the, the game does have it there uh, in that kind of simultaneous selection and, and yours might get taken so you have to go for a different choice, that kind of leaves the door open just slightly for that analysis paralysis to creep in. So um, it is a minor, minor, minor con, but it's there, so I feel like I need to mention it. Now, having said all that, I'm going to give this game a strong 8.5 out of 10 because I really enjoyed nearly every aspect of the game. The only thing that kind of brought it back down off of a 9 was that analysis paralysis thing. Uh, it, it's still, though, a seal of excellence from me because this is a great game. This is the kind of production value that I want to see out of every single publisher that's out there. I know that's not always going to be practical or even possible because some companies have more money than others. I get that. But this is the kind of level of detail that I want to look from the box insert to uh, where the pieces are kept within the box insert, how they're going to be kept safe uh, during travel, all of this kind of stuff. That's the level of detail that I want to uh, see in a game, especially from its insert. On top of that, all of the different ways that uh, the game plays, how quick it is, and uh, how simple simple it is to teach, how simple it is to play. All of those things really kind of match uh, together well. Then the artwork on top of that, the graphic design, how everything is laid out, uses uh, easily recognizable iconography. All of that just works together to make a very well-designed, well-packaged, and well... Um, 
made <laughs> game. So eight and a half out of 10 for me, a really great game. You really need to give this one a try. That's it from me, Tales of Glory, eight and a half out of 10. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Thanks for joining and take care.